here are some of my favorite little plants in the garden. You know what them is? Cucumbers. You know what cucumbers make, don't you? Pickles. And if you ain't tried that pickle recipe that my mother used, that we used, that I made a video of, you better try it. Everybody that tries it, it says they're the best they ever eat. But anyway, I'm putting some plastic down on my cucumbers because I hate having to dig through the weeds trying to find my cucumbers. So I'm going to take care of that with some of this plastic row cover and i'm gonna show you the way i've been doing it seems to work pretty good yeah and i apologize for starting without you the way i've been doing it is i measured the row first and rolled out my plastic up there in the yard and then cut the length i needed and just flopped it up i didn't really roll it i just flopped it over and over you can see there how it's kind of a roll what that does, it allows me to roll this out and one plant at a time, I've been pulling this plastic tight and pinning it down, rolling it over the plants, pulling it tight, pinning it down, and I can come back and I can feel my plants right under there. I know exactly where they're at to cut my hole for them to come through. And with the plastic being tight, everything's gonna work out good. I know on the last round of this plastic I was putting down, a lot of people suggested to use a blowtorch, or as my grandpa used to call it, a blow scorch, to burn your holes through there. Well, you can't do it with your cucumbers under there. You burn them up. And I may have many people suggested that. My buddy said that's how he done it down in Mississippi. But I didn't know he uses a different type of material that's a lot tougher than this this is just thin poly that i'm using one time use stuff and i didn't know if it might this stuff was flammable if it'd burn or not but i guess not because a lot of people said it's what they use all right we're gonna roll it out right here's our cucumber flop it over it real gentle like this stuff's real light and i'm gonna pull it tight out here at my next plant and put a pin in it to hold it in place there. And these pins I'm using are just landscape fabric pins. And I'm not pushing them all the way in. I'm just pushing them maybe halfway. And after the vines gets out on this, I'll go ahead and go through and pull these out so we won't have to worry about them getting lost in here, hitting them with a weed eater or something. Pull it tight. Just like that. Put that pin in it. Good and see. You can get it nice and smooth like that because if you try to cut your holes before you get it good and tight, they're not going to line up good for you. And you can see right there with that plant sticking up. And you can always peek under there if you need to, but these plants are pretty big and it ain't no problem to pull in there and figure out right exactly where they're at. Might even go a couple of plants if you wanted to. And pull that plastic nice and tight and straight. Pin it down. Get it right there. And we can see what we're doing. It ain't no problem. You can see where them plants are pushing up on that plastic right there. See? Feel them right there. Just like that. Right there. Real easy to tell what you're looking at. Just got to be careful. Make sure you don't injure your plants when you Cutting a hole in there. When 
times you get a spot in the plastic where it's wanting to rise up above the plant. So what I'm gonna do is just take me a pin, find a good side and just pin it down just like that. Fix that problem. Cause I'm gonna come to the edge of this plastic just so I can get the most coverage out of it. That's all I'm trying to do. And kind of tighten it up on both sides. And that'll give me the nice wide spread that I want to get as much coverage as I can. I wanted to show y'all here. This happens every year. See how these cucumber leaves look? See these holes where they've been eat on? Well, what's doing that? They do it of a night. They'll look good one evening, the next morning they look like that. What does that is these daggum roly polies. See them right there? I didn't know they eat on live plants, but they do. So what I've done, I just tear the holes bigger, and I got some powdered lime over here. It got a little wet, but what I'm gonna do just take that powdered lime and put it all around my cucumber plants. They don't like it and it seems to work. So that's what we do to keep them little jokers out because they are destructive on our cucumbers. And I've done this once this year and it seemed to really work good. So. I can't tell you what long term, if they'll get used to it or what, but it's it's worked so far. You see this one, see these holes right here? And then with eating on it, and caught, see them piled up up here, just waiting, waiting for tonight when they can come out and eat some more. And over here, they go hide under something during the day and come out of a night and eat your stuff up. If you can overlime a cucumber or not, but we're sure gonna push our limits this time. Sorry about that, got the camera off. I don't know what else to do to them little jokers to try to keep them out, but. Like I said, I can't speak for the long-term effects of this or, or the effects it'll have on the cucumbers. Nothing bad, I hope, but if you don't do something, you're gonna lose them, so. I'm not gonna sit around without trying, so we shall see. Just wanted to share that with you. Now, the reason I know this lime does work on these roly polies is because when these plants was real little, they come out and started eating on them, and I took done the lime, and they all disappeared. I mean, they was just wadded up around the base of the plant, and I limed it good, and they all disappeared and was gone until the rain washed the lime away. So I think if I had this to do over, I would lime around the cucumbers before I put the plastic down. And the lime that's underneath the plastic's gonna last longer and these things can't fly, so they have to crawl in. I don't know, we'll find out, hopefully it helps. Like I say, I can't tell you what it will or will not do for the cucumbers, but we gotta keep the bugs off of them at least, so. strip above the jimmy red corn down there i'm gonna put in some winter squash and a neighbor down the road give me some watermelon seeds he wanted me to try they're supposed to make up maybe even over a 200 pound watermelon they're called carolina cross so i'm looking forward to putting them in seeing how they do i'm gonna show you how i 
when I'm starting out with just a flat spot, how I fix it to plant seeds or plants for the winter squash and the watermelons. So this patch is about 28 feet wide. So I'm gonna divide that into three, which will be about nine feet. So I'm gonna walk in nine feet from each side and I'm gonna make a row and I'm gonna put my little heels out that row. I'm just putting my space in about six to eight feet apart on these. And I just put my big scoop of compost or cow manure right on top of the ground. Here's what we're going to plant in these first few beds. We'll see how many seeds they are, see how far they go. This is a gift from a neighbor. It's Carolina Cross watermelons. Now, the watermelons I usually grow or that I'm growing this year is Georgia rattlesnakes. So I'm looking forward to growing something different. It's going to be fun. We'll see how they do. But it says on the back they can grow up to over 200 pounds. So we'll see. So we've got here... We'll put two seeds per heel. And we've got a total of eight seeds, so that'll be four heels out through here. For the rest of these hills out through here, I'm gonna plant Seminole winter squash. And these things look like a little pumpkin and they're, they will keep, we've kept them over two years before in proper store, just laying in the house. Just where it's airish and cool, if you cure them out, these have laid for over two years. So they're an awesome storage crop. They're Seminoles. Whenever I'm planting a seed, pretty much any kind of seed, I want to have good contact. Now for these, I'm hoping to have two heels, two plants per heel, so I'm putting three seeds per heel. I like to tamp it in, tighten it up, because what that does is it surrounds that seed real nice and tight and it makes it germinate a whole lot faster than if you just put it in there and rake some dirt over it. And then it has to wait on the rain to tighten everything up. Up in the holler here, this is my Jimmy Red corn patch. Planted it here the other night. And uh, we're going to put some crow lines up to keep the crows from taking it up when it starts coming up. So... That's what I'm gonna do right now. I was noticing something up here. The jack pines. 
yellow pines. I don't know if you could tell or not, but they're turning brown. It looks like something is killing them. Oh, here's another one here. See how brown? Look how brown them is. And I don't know if these, what's going on with them, but I was looking over here, going up towards your mountain over there. You can see they're brown. If you can tell all that, yeah, you can see there. See how brown they are? I don't know what's getting wrong with them. But I hate to see it. I hate to see anything like that die out. For the people that don't know, what I do is let's put up random stakes, dry them up. I take the guts out of a VHS tape. Take that film and stretch it out and twist it a little bit and go to the top of these stakes and tie it. I just run it all over the place. And it flops in the wind and turns and shimmers. Keeps them crows scared off. So I'll just put this on time lapse. We'll turn you on some good music. And you can watch me get her done. this is right here is just tapes out of a VHS movie. What I do, get this into the end here, and uh, put this on here like that, tie it there. Now I'm just going to go to each stake all the way around the outside edge and then I'm going to start Xing in to these three center posts and make an X pattern, three X patterns. Just something to look spooky. Now when you're getting these tapes out of these movies, make sure you don't get nothing funny or no family movies, nothing like that, no comedies or families. Make sure you get real good scary movies because you don't want these crows to like them. All right, we got them up. You can see why they'd scare something off. They all got a little different twist to them. So they, they all do a little something different in the breeze. And just look how shiny that is. It's, I wish you could see it in person. It kind of plays tricks on your eyes, but it works good. Keep crows out of your corn. Or anything else you want to keep them out of. I don't know if you necessary to have these going across the middle here. If you could see, I just made three X's with these center posts, one around the outside perimeter, and then made three X's here in the middle. So, man, it is beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful evening. Let's check something while we're up here. Oh, see what this corn's doing, if anything. It's getting hold of the earth. Looky there. It's 
getting a hold of the earth. Grow, little baby, grow. Grow and make us some good meal and corn. Looks like we're gonna get some rain, which is a good thing. Cause it's a tad bit dry right now. We got a lot of seeds in the ground needs to sprout.